He's still here because God says so, amen? Amen. God is the one that's in control, and he's the one that has that great plan for your life, amen? amen. Praise God. Well, let's get ready for the word, amen? God's got a word for us. Praise God. Come on. We got to get a global hallelujah. Just stand to your feet. I want, yeah, I need you to, because I'm getting ready to release some. God's releasing revelation off the altars of heaven. How many know God can give you a word that can change everything for you today? He can give you one word from heaven that fixes your whole, all of your problems, and he just gave you an answer just like that. Now, you want to be in a position to receive that kind of release from heaven. Amen? Amen. So let's shout this hallelujah and let God know we're ready to receive the word today. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Glory to God. That sounded good, but now I want you to do another hallelujah, but this time do it. Give us a word of life, hallelujah, please. That was uh that wasn't word of life. That was a hallelujah, but I need a word of life, hallelujah. Can't. Amen. Y'all know what I mean? Alright. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Praise God. Now we are, now we're ready. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Ah, now we're ready. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing us, Lord. Blessing us to be here this morning. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen church said amen. amen praise god looks your name and say get your bible out, get your bible out. amen we're gonna need that amen we're definitely gonna need it in these times especially in these times that we're in um i've been preaching this series here for sundays entitled the kingdom way and we're gonna preach the kingdom way part eight this morning and the subtitle of this morning's message is receiving your desires receiving your desires. Amen? Amen. We're not doing this without instruction because we have the Bible. As long as we have the Bible, then we are okay. Amen? Amen. Then we can know what to do, what to think, how to live. And God is really looking to take us further. Now, last week, we spent some time dealing with our needs. Amen? And that God really will provide, and he wants to get us, he wants to really move us from being those uh, need-based Christians, amen? amen, to where it's a situation where you're dealing with lack. Matter of fact, last week we said that lack is not allowed, what, in the economy of God, amen? Lack is not allowed, and so I gave you plenty of scripture to back that up. But how many of y'all have some desires? Come on, can we just be, you know, if you have children and you raise them up and you ask them what they want for Christmas or something like that, most of the time they tell you and they don't say, oh, well, just, you know, whatever. <laughs> can I get an amen right here? Amen. Hey, hey, has that ever happened to any parent? It never happened. My kids never did that. Amen. So what you want for Christmas? Oh, no, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I'm just, yeah, we could skip it this year. <laughs> they never do that. They're like, uh, when? When? <laughs> When is Christmas? Birthdays? You know, your kids will remind you about their birthday when they're young. Amen. You know, they'll remind you. They don't, you don't, don't you know your kid's birthday? <laughs> but they'll tell you, you know, my birthday's coming up next month. <laughs> What's funny is they'll, they'll be talking about the next age, you know, three months out. While I'm getting ready to turn, well, man, that, that's quite some time left. We, <laughs> we got some distance on that. But they're reminding you. Well, they have no problem sharing their desires. Now, I want us in the church to just really do things the way God wants. And then you got to know the heart of God. Look at your name and say, I want to know the heart of God. And see what God wants. And God, you know, God knows more about you than you know about yourself. He knows more about you than you know about yourself. So we can't pretend that we're not people that get excited when desires come into our lives, or if we're people that are living without any desires whatsoever, I mean, oh, that's not pleasing God either. Amen? 
And so we've got to get an understanding of what God is, is releasing. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. And we're going to look here at verse 12. And we're just going to receive everything God has for us. Okay. Hope. Look at your name and say, do you still have hope? Man, you know, if, you know what happens if people give up hope? They, it's over. You know, so we can never be a people that allow ourselves to get so discouraged that we give up hope. You know, people have settled in life. Don't raise your hand, but I know I'm going to speak this word out and somebody's going to be blessed by it. Maybe you had big dreams at one point, but then through situations, circumstances, life experiences, all of a sudden your dreams kind of went into a funnel and they went away. And now you used to think so big. But then all of a sudden, based on your reality, your thinking has started to get smaller and smaller. Well, I came out here today because God put an anointing on me to revive your hope. Come on, somebody, to cause you to wake those dreams up, amen, to cause you to think big again because you're still serving a big God. The only way that you should ever give up hope is if you decide to turn on Jesus. If you decide to turn on Jesus, then yes, you better give up hope because there ain't no hope left for you. But if you're still with Jesus, I don't care what kind of trial, come on, somebody, you might have gone through. I don't care what kind of situation you may be facing. He's still on the throne and he's still got good stuff in store for you. And the word of God here says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred. You know, <laughs> Pastor Kim is speaking about, you know, old no man, anything and, and, you know, being debt free and all that kind of stuff. That's a boy. I'm telling you, that's good. But, you know, even when you. Or having to get a lot of loans and all that stuff. You like that deferred payment plan, huh? <laughs> Where they deferred a little bit, amen? Well, when it comes to your desires and the things that you want, you're going to need to start seeing some manifestation because the word of God here says hope deferred, what does it do? It makes the heart sick. Somebody say, but. Oh, so what does that mean? Y'all with me? That's going to cancel out the sick heart. See, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So what does that mean? When it's taken too long, come on, you can get weary and well-doing. But the Bible says here, but when the desire cometh. But what if you don't have no more desires? Because what if you got caught in the first part of that? You got caught in hope deferred. Makes the heart sick, so you got caught up with a sick heart, and all of a sudden you gave up on your dreams. You said, well, I don't even want that no more. But he says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when? Somebody say when. when. Now, as long as you have a desire, then you can qualify for the scripture. But if you don't have any more desires, you can't qualify because there's nothing for him to bring you because it doesn't say when I bless you in whatever way I feel like blessing you. Does that, is that what that says? He says, when the desire cometh. Whose desire is this? Okay, so when the desire cometh, what is it? Oh, glory to God. It's a tree of life. Come on, somebody. When the desire comes, when God answers your prayer, when you have something that you've been believing God for and it happens, how many know that is a tree of life that will cause you to rise up? Come on. That is a tree of life that will cause you to shine. And you know what? It will open your mouth. You will not be quiet about it. Come on, somebody. When God comes through for you and the devil sees some of you, the devil almost got you to the point of giving up on the thing. Just saying, forget it. Let me settle in. Don't settle for less than God's best because God's best is in store for you. When the desire cometh, 
Look at your neighbor saying, I'm starting to remember my desires. Come on, look at him and say, it's starting to come back to me now. I'm just saying, whoo, glory to God. I'm just, man, I'm kind of getting excited about it. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know what, there's some things. Come on, there's some things I put, you know, you got the back burner. You know, they say you got the back burner. But then you got, you know, some of y'all got the, the drawer underneath the stove. Amen. You don't even see it no more. So you, you know what I'm saying? Remember them old school stoves where you, you cook it on the bottom, the broiler? Well, when you put stuff in there, you forget about it. Amen. So hopefully that thing ain't turned on because that ain't nobody checking that. <laughs> so let's not allow ourselves to see. I believe that we're in position to receive great things from God. I believe God is looking to turn some stuff around in somebody's life. I believe God is looking to do something, come on, late in the midnight hour. I believe God is looking to surprise some of y'all. But he's not going to give you something that you haven't even been looking for like that. You get a lot of extra stuff. But I'm talking about, man, you wanted this thing and it seemed like it took forever. And then, boom, overnight status changed for you. And all of a sudden, today... You're walking in what you were believing God for yesterday. And it just happened like that. Amen. Y'all believe he can do it. Can God do it overnight? Does, can, does it have to take some long drawn out plan? I mean, come on. God could just do it because he's God. Now, let's go to uh, Proverbs 13, 12 in the message translation. Let's put the message up, please. Amen. Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. Let me just stop right there. <clears throat> Don't believe these people that tell you, you know, oh, bad things happen to everybody. I mean, you know, you just got to get over it. Has anybody ever tried to tell you to get over it and you said, man, I can't. I ain't that easy. Maybe you didn't say that, but you felt that. They say, come on, just get over it. Just let it go. And in your mind, you're going, I don't want to get over it. I don't feel like letting that go. I'm a little upset about that. <laughs> Amen? But what's the word say? Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. You think God wants you to be heart sick? Well, if you are constantly, come on, imagine that. There's a kid who wants something and they never get it. Well, at some point, they stop asking. They just say, forget it. They just stop asking. Come on, they keep, oh, this, this year I'm going to get it. This year I'm going to get it. And they never get it. Unrelenting. Put that back up there, please. Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. But a sudden good break. Oh, come on. But a sudden good break, come on, can turn you. Oh, man. See, I... I must be, I'm preaching to me. Glory to God. This is a word. God gave me a word for me. You know, because I'm honest with God. See, that's one thing I want to encourage you. Don't try to be all super spiritual because you're not that deep. You might think you got it all together. You better just go ahead and be honest with God. You better tell God, look, God, you know, <laughs> whoo, glory to God. I'm getting a little weak in my faith right now. Now, don't go. I'm not telling you to go tell everybody. I'm telling you to talk to your God. Yeah. Let God know. <laughs> Glory to God, I need a breakthrough. I need a move from heaven. Because this unrelenting disappointment is going to lead to this sick heart. But can you put that up there? But when, but a sudden good break. How many of y'all need a good break? I mean, it's just a good break. That's like the right person showing up at the right time. Come on, you could be waiting for something to be approved and the right person can step in right on time and sign it. Come on, they only went there for one day, but God sent them over there just to get your stuff approved. Just to get all your stuff fixed and then they, see a sudden good break, come on, can turn your life around. You're just one moment away. From a status change. 
So why would we lose hope? Amen? If I am living my life like that, come on, I'm going to just say it right now, and I believe that God has this for you. But how many of y'all believe God has a then suddenly in store for you? Amen? I'm just saying, a then suddenly. God's got a then, ah, glory to God. God's got a then suddenly in store for word of life. With the devil's attempt to bring discouragement, God's going to bring a, a celebration, a time of celebration. God's going to bring some jaw-dropping miracles. God's going to bring some stuff that'll have you in awe. Because we're not going to stop believing it. A then suddenly, I mean, God's got a then suddenly in store for your life, but you got to keep your hope strong. Go to Isaiah 48, Isaiah 48, verse three. I'm looking forward to this. See, when that thing, you get that sudden good break, not everybody's going to know how long you've been believing God for, but how many know you're not going to care either. You're just going to receive it. Amen. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now. I am not going to go spend all this time talking about it. I've been praying for this for so many years. When that thing shows up, I'm just going to rejoice. I'm going to be so full of joy that I won't even think about how much distance I've had to travel. Because it'll happen just like that. Isaiah 48. Now, if you get in the word and you study and you meditate and you, you go to God, come on. He'll tell you stuff before it happens, but you got to keep believing Isaiah 48, 3, I have declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them when? So what does that mean? That's like all of a sudden. It's like, oh, wow, just like that. Bam. You know, the enemy tries to have us focus on sudden tragedy and sudden death and sudden like that. But how many know we need to meditate on some sudden blessings? I'm talking about some then suddenly like, you know what? You looked at your bank account and it had this much. Come on. And then all of a sudden, then suddenly the Holy Ghost said, check again. <laughs> Come on. The Holy Ghost said, check one more time. And you checked again and it was bam, overflow. <laughs> I'm on. OK, thank you, brother, because I'm I'm like, Lord, is this really all just for me? I mean, like, I don't want to be the only one. Getting all of this. Because I'm talking about God doing this stuff, man. You know, God can take you. Come on. And move you to a different status. And it won't take long. He can change that status in a second. He says, I did them suddenly. And what happened? They came to pass. You know, people have been battling illness and suddenly they got healed. It's like, oh, wow, they just woke up and felt 100% better. And that stuff can happen overnight. You ever been faced with a need, come on, a serious need, and then all of a sudden God met the need? I mean, and God moved you past that, amen? Come on, God is still working miracles. God can still do something amazing. Overnight status change. But what do we have to do? We have to agree with God. See, I do not believe that God wants us to learn how to live life with unfulfilled desires. Let me just say that again. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that God wants you to just get used to not having what you want. I don't believe that God wants you to live a life filled with unfulfilled desires. Amen. Because if that were the case, then God would destine me to have a sick heart. I don't believe God wants me to have a sick heart. How about you guys? So then he cannot expect me to live this life and go through this whole life with unfulfilled desires. 
If they're unfulfilled, come on, I'd rather not have them. And the enemy says, that's right, so give up on all of them. But I believe God has put those desires in my heart. I believe God is the one that is even causing me to see beyond where I am today. It's God because God told Abram, he says, whatever you can see is yours. So it's God that empowers me to see what? Through the eyes of faith. How I many know oh, faith is the substance of things what? Hope for and the evidence of things not seen. And Hebrews, that's Hebrews 11, 1, but Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if God did not put me in the earth and have me be here and not please him. So I got to be believing for something. Well, what is it? The things hoped for. What are you hoping for? Now we start talking about your desires. Amen. So you got to make sure that you're aware of the fact that God is in the business of blessing me. God does not want me to go around. How I many know? Wouldn't it be messed up if the only testimony we ever heard was doom and gloom? You know what? If, what, if, what if that was? What, that's all we heard. Wow, saints! I lost everything. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God. We're going to have it one day. Next testimony. Well, saints of God, I just came to tell you, they stole my car, they stole my money, stole my wife. <laughs> but God is good. Don't you just love Jesus? I'm not, I'm, I'm not impressed. Amen. I'm not saying I, that I'm just carnal, but I mean, like, come on, I need somebody to say something else. That ain't going to motivate me. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that you never go through anything, but don't expect. Now, I didn't sign up for Jesus. So now, glory to God, I just put on a sticker on my back. Kick me, beat me, abuse me. I'm with Jesus. That ain't that ain't the jacket I put on. Amen. I didn't put that on. Amen. I know that we have to go through things, but let me tell you something. I did not sign up for Christianity because they told me my life was going to get worse. I ain't what I signed up for. So when I signed up for it, I'm expecting things to get better for me. I would rather carry, come on, somebody, y'all can like it or not, but let me just tell you where I'm coming from. I'd rather walk around with a badge of blessing, come on, than a badge of trial. I'd rather walk around with my head held high, my shoulders back saying, yep, God bless me, instead of, look at me. I've been beat down for Jesus. I've been going through the desert. I've been on a long road. Glory to God. I don't want to be that person. I want to be the person on the other side walking with the badge of blessing saying, oh, you do look beat down. Let me help you. Yes. Why don't you come over my place and get some rest? Amen. Let me let you rest in my garden. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's, that's what I'm going for. That's, and I believe God has that for me. Amen. How, why do I believe that? He tells me in his word. Let's go to Psalm, Psalm 37. See, let build, build your life on the word. Build your expectation on the word. Don't build it. You know, it's easy. You know, it's easier to give up on dreaming big and stuff. It's easy to give up on that and just settle. Amen? I'm going to tell you right now, it's very easy. Now, I'm, you should be thankful. But that does not mean you settle. Amen? That does not mean, because you sure will be mad if you settle for hot dogs and you get to heaven and God said, well, I had steak for you, but you never asked for it. And you didn't just been all filled with nitrates and just all messed up. It's all jacked up for your whole life. System all messed up. Eating spam and all that kind of stuff. And God said, wow. You didn't really have to do all that. Come on, top ramen, Amen. You can't be eating ageless stuff, you know, stuff that 
stuff that, that, that has no expiration date. Amen. It just don't, that might not be good for you to, you know, develop a diet on that. I mean, it's like, how come this never gets old? <laughs> Amen. You don't want to, you don't want to build your life on that. And so Psalm 37, verse four, let's look at it in the King James. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Now that's what you got to do. Amen. So what does that mean? You got to just, man, take pleasure in even being in the presence of God. Delight. I'm delighted by even knowing God and being in his presence. But now what's he going to do? This is, you know, you know how we do it over here. We just teach the word. You know, then we give you guys a chance to read it. Amen. And, and we want you to learn it. Just like we want you to learn the praise songs and stuff like that. I want you to learn the scriptures so you can participate, so you can grow by it. You can say, well, that's what the word says. So delight thyself also in the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I can do that. Okay, so what does that mean? You know, you're excited about God. You're not, nobody's forcing you. You're not like, you know, God's calling you and you're like, oh. Some of y'all get calls from people that, you know, you don't want to answer it. Just be honest. You get that, you, you look at that name. If you got them in your context, you're like, oh, let me, let me get back with them. But God wants to know that you're excited about the relationship you have with him. And so you're excited about God. I mean, even if you just think about God, you come on, you just feel a joy come on you because you're like, man, I just love God and God loves me. So that's delighting yourself in the Lord. Amen. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And what's going to happen? So the delight part, who's that? that who got to do that? You? Okay, so what's God? Now, let me ask you this. Are you going to stop God from doing his part? That would not be fair. You delight yourself in him. Then he says here, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. So then he says, what are your desires, daughter? What are your desires, son? And you say, oh, I'm nothing. I'm just, you know, whew, whatever you got for me. Spam. I'll take it. I mean, you know, because they starving in Africa. Well, you ain't over there right now. And let me tell you something about Africa. We always said that growing up as kids. Everybody ain't starving. Everybody. Glory to God. I know of a pastor a bishop that has a church and he's building, it might be finished, but he's building a sanctuary to hold 100,000 people in one service. Right now, or before that was built, he was running 50,000 a service, four services a day. 200,000, right, they ain't starving. Y'all can look him up, Bishop Ohidipu. <laughs> he said, is that a real name? <laughs> So I, I, this is real. Now, I might not pronounce it exactly right, but, you know, that's why I wasn't going to say that. But, uh, but I think, you know, there's not a lot of names that's close to that, so y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen? Say it to Suri or something. She might pick it up. But listen, thriving. You know what I mean? But our perception is, you know, people don't have anything. So don't use that as your excuse anymore. Don't use that as your excuse to settle because someone else maybe has it worse than you. Net, Yes, you should be thankful to God, but don't settle. Let's believe God for greater things. So he says, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now, verse five, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Now, what this means, let's look at this. Um, I'll look at it quickly. In the uh, amplified. So you got to learn how to release everything, the cares and all that kind of stuff, and don't be bogged down. Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on him. Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And so once again, from last week, let's not let our needs and all that get in the way. Give God all of that. But then also your desires. If it's a desire... Release it to God. Trust him. Keep believing and let him do what only he can do. Now let's go to James. I'm just giving you because I, I, I feel like we need to 
have the word on it so we'll know that, okay, God is really uh, in the business of blessing me. I mean, God really does want to do this. So you get to believe in big and then everybody, you know, they want to tell you that's the wrong way. You know, you should not. You don't have to take a vow of poverty. I mean, how, why would you take a vow of poverty and your daddy's rich? What kind of sense does that make? I'm going to go ahead and represent my daddy and be broke. Wait, he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. All the silver, all the gold belongs to him. So why are you running around here with nothing? And saying that I'm that I'm a better Christian now. Amen. They look at that. They look at pastors like that. Oh, he's this sweet pastor. You know, he's just he's holy because he got holes in his shoes. Well, I'm not having holes in my shoes. Amen. I'm living clean for God, but I'm not about to be running around here settling for stuff. You know? And, and well, you know what? You're not allowed. I'm, I'm expecting to have a lot more than I got today. Just so y'all know. I have no intentions of going backwards. Amen. Amen. It's only up for me. So I'm not, I'm not going to be worried about what somebody might think. If God is blessing me and God wants me to have good things. So go to James, James chapter one, verse 17. Let's look at it in the King James. So it says here, every good and every perfect gift is from above. Hmm. And cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So he's going to remain the same. It's not going to be fickle. But let's look at this in the Amplified. Every good and every perfect, free, large, full. Hmm. So how am I going to say God doesn't want me to have anything? But he says every free, large, full gift is from above. And it comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation, rising or settling, or shadow casting by his turning as in an eclipse. What that is saying is God is not fickle. It's not going to be hot one day, cold the next. He's God. He's always going to be God. And this is what he wants. Every good gift is coming from God. In the message translation, there's a little part that I want to focus on. Just put that up, 117 in the message. Just look at the first part. He says, every desirable. See that? Every desirable and beneficial. Don't raise your hand, but have any of you ever gotten a gift that you didn't really want? <laughs> and many you don't really, you know, come on. Some of y'all might have a place that you put those things in your house. And nobody sees it. But this is not what God is looking to do. God's not looking to give you a bunch of stuff you don't want. Because some people, did, you know, they say, well, you know what? I don't really want all of this. I mean, if you don't want it, that's okay. God don't have to give it to you. But if he never knows what you, now, of course, he's God and he knows everything. But he wants you to express yourself to him as a loving father. And not just a God who you're afraid of, but he wants you to go out and express yourself. What is it? Let God know about it. Every good and perfect gift. The, the message says every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. See, it's going to come down. It's got to be desirable. So look at your name and say, I do have desires. Okay, now look back at them and say, and God knows about them. See, what am I? I'm not trying to tell you to go to God like he's a genie and all that. I want you to open your heart. Let God know what is it that you want? What do you want to do? What, what, what kind of things do you want to see God do for you? Because God gets joy out of all of this. Now go to Psalm 35. I have to go to a lot of scriptures because I really don't have any other way to explain this. You know, one time, I believe somebody complained. She said, I don't, the service was okay, but he went to too many scriptures. I said, wow. So 
Said, well, you definitely don't need to come back here because I have no other approach. Now, I have seen some preachers, though. They, they must have a gift of gab, amen, because you have seen those preachers. I've seen them, and they go to one scripture, and they could just break it all the way down, man, and, and get to singing and sweating and doing all kinds of stuff and go through a whole bunch of stuff on one scripture. I don't know how to do that. So I got to just keep taking you to scripture. So navigate me, because I believe that we need to build it. If we build it, we can build it on the word. Amen. And, and if we build it on the word, it's going to last. So Psalm 35, 27. Uh, so, so this is a scripture that we can look at and we can be excited about. It. He says, verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad to favor my righteous cause. Yeah, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which what? So who has pleasure? Who has the pleasure in this context of scripture? So I'm going to magnify the Lord who has pleasure in what? In me being a good Christian and not, and not giving him a headache? No, God is not looking to punish us, church. He, he's not going around looking who he can punish. He's looking for somebody to bless because, okay, how about this? Doesn't it feel good to you when you're able to bless people? Amen. Like if you can bless your kids, amen, you know, your kids, they, they grow up and they do right and you're able to bless them. Doesn't that make you feel good? Yes. Well, how about our Heavenly Father? Yes. He takes pleasure. Like I get joy out of that. Amen. Some of y'all like to shop for yourself. That's okay too. But some people really like to shop for others. Just like, man, I just want to buy them that. Amen. Anybody here? Y'all like, no, Pastor. We like buying for ourselves. <laughs> I thought this was on desires. I'm talking about my stuff today. <laughs> I'm just trying to draw a point here. You understand, it's, it feels good. It feels good to be able to bless somebody with something they really wanted. Amen? Doesn't that feel much better than just giving them anything? And you just give them a little something and say, you just ought to be glad I gave you that. But it feels much better. And so now here's the way our Heavenly Father works. Is he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And so we'll praise him and we can be excited. That's what the next verse says. But he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So look at your name and say, God takes pleasure. And now let's say it like you mean it. Say, God takes pleasure in my prosperity. Okay, so see, that means your prosperity brings God joy. Your prospering brings God an excitement because he wants to see you as his kids in the earth prospering. Now, what we must do is we must learn to ask. Y'all with me? Did you know you can ask God for stuff? We must learn to ask, but then now we also must learn to believe. Now go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. In verse 7, we'll just look at it in, uh, let me see, the King James. Matthew 7, we're looking at King James, 7 through 11. So it says here, ask, and it shall be given unto you. So what does that mean? Ask? Yeah, you're going to have to ask God. Amen? You know, ask God. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, just so we know what this is, because sometimes people want to over-spiritualize this and say, you know, like we're asking for some spiritual thing or something like that. But let, let's just look at the next part, because the word explains itself. Verse 9, Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, 
Luke should never say bread is not spiritual. Okay, this is, this is carnal stuff we're talking about. Of whom his son asks bread, and he will give him a stone. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? See? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How many of you have ever given your kids anything good? And you know how to do that, don't you? Okay. I'm not calling you evil, but he's making a point here. How about if we say it like this? If I'm really, you know, God is going to be able to do a lot better of a job at it than me. And so if I'm able to do this, he says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them? Y'all see this? Okay, let's look at it in the Amplified. I just got to keep teaching. So he says in the verse 11 in the Amplified, if you then, as evil as you are, <laughs> know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children. I mean, even heathens today know how to give their kids stuff. You know what I mean? Come on, everybody that goes and buys their kids stuff is not saved. So there are people that just, They'll do the world wrong and they, and they do their kids right. They give their kids stuff. And so what he's saying is, if you then, as evil as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, as perfect as he is, see that comparison? Give good and advantageous things to those who keep on asking him. Now, you're not going to keep asking if you don't believe. Now, this doesn't mean that you just um, take the approach of trying to wear God down. You just ask, but then you continue to believe that he has heard you and that he's going to respond to you. So now you start to thank him for hearing your prayer. You don't let that thing go away. If you ever ask God for something big, if you ever ask God in any time in your life, keep believing it. Keep believing it. You can go to God and thank him for it and don't give up because how I many know he could still do it and he can do it suddenly. Because you know what? You would be upset if you were believing for something big and then somebody else got something big and you go, wow, how'd you get that? And then they say, I just kept believing God. And it was really big. And you go, oh, that big thing I was believing for, I let that go. You want to pick it back up? Keep believing because God can do it. But we've got to be those people that are not afraid to ask. And then after we ask, we've got to learn how to believe. Now go to Mark. Mark chapter 11. Come on, let's, let's, let's start carrying around a badge of blessings. Anybody want to do that? Come on. Y'all want to start a blessings club? Amen. Amen. How about, because, you know, everybody can't be the broke down Christian. I mean, how many know that job's already taken? Amen. There are no more openings over there. I mean, every, the, the broke down Christian life, everybody, you know, I'm just suffering for Jesus. All slots are filled over there. But we got some openings on the blessing side. I want to be one of those ones that, oh, you know what, who am I? Oh, I'm just one of those blessed Christians. And then, of course, everybody's going to say, oh, and that's we you spiritually best. No, 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 I got some stuff. <laughs> oh, gosh. Praise the Lord. Okay, Mark 11, 24. So don't learn to do without. Don't settle. Come on, you want your situation to change? Get a hold of the word on it. Pray to God. Seek God. Let God know the desires of your heart and expect him to bring a change into your life. Don't learn how to deal with it and cope it because that, that's, that's messed up, man. Some people just get used to stuff. It's not good. You know what I mean? You can't, you shouldn't get used to always using stuff that's broken. It doesn't work that good. And you just keep putting tape on it. You should want something new. Amen. You should want something. Okay, Lord, you know, I'm going to wear this shirt again because nobody can see the hole in it. Let that go. Ask God for a new shirt. Amen. God might, he just might bless you. Amen. You just ask, you know, I'm just making this 
point because we kind of get used to settling and doing without and, and think somehow that's holy. Ain't nothing holy about that. I just gave you scripture that says our God wants to bless us. So how do we call doing without holy? Where do we get that from? You should have every need met and you should start to enter into your desires. I must be preaching to you in the back. I got at least one in here, man. I'm telling y'all. You guys, man, don't be scared of God. You know what I mean? Think about this. You're supposed to have all your needs met, man. And now you're supposed to be stepping into desires. Come on, how about all your needs were met on Friday, then uh, Saturday was desire day. You know, you woke up Saturday and God was like, this is just all extra. Huh? Y'all want, come on, y'all want to wake up and come on, wake up on Monday. Oh, all the needs are met, but I keep all these other deposits that I'm getting from my desires. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I got to learn that God can do it. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you, what? So haven't we used that word a lot today? So if the Bible's saying that you ought to have a desire, then that's what you should have. Whatsoever things you desire. When you pray, pray what? No, no, no. But what are you praying? Oh, is that okay? See, they, they, they tell you. You know, you, you're not supposed to just go in there. God's not a genie, so just don't spend all your time. You didn't have to spend all the time, but some of it because this word here says when whatever you desire, when you pray. So what does that mean? That lets us know I'm supposed to pray those desires. My prayer is how I let God know about it. God already knows because he knows everything, but me voicing it to him, come on, lets him know that I'm believing he can do it. Because you're never going to ask him. If you don't believe, he can do it. And so when you pray, believe that you receive what? Then you shall have them. What's that them talking about? Whatever your desire is. So asking you again, you have desires, right? OK, so you said you told God about it, right? OK, so now what you do next is believe, come on, that you receive them. And actually, you're supposed to believe it when you pray. So when I prayed and then released it, I'm supposed to believe then. And then now what? I'll receive them. And so now I believe God's got things he wants to get into our lives. But we have to make sure that we're not allowing the enemy to put up roadblocks and different things that block us from receiving what God has for us. Now, verse 25 is crucial. Because a... Unforgiving heart will block blessings every time. It stops God from giving into your life. He wants to give it to you. He has it for you. But he says here in verse 25, and when you stand praying, forgive. What? Who? Huh? So only people that are deserving of your forgiveness? No. When you Stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. That your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive you. So that right there totally stops you and shuts you down and you can't be in the blessings club. That's going to mess you up. Amen. You can say, Pastor, I want to sign up for the blessings club. And I'm going to ask you, have you forgiven everybody? Almost. Okay, well, come back next month. We'll see if we got any openings in the Blessing Club. But we can't let you in right now. Why? Unforgiveness, man. You can't go in there with that. So what does that mean? Let everybody go. Come on, somebody right now, just say, I let them all go. Come on, right now, just, if you, just think right now for a second. You know what? And I let them go, too. Just say that. I let them go, too. That one right there, I let them go, too. Mm -hmm. That one, because, you know, some of them are at the forefront. Then there's that one that's like, they done done me too wrong. And I'm going to have to go back to that later. I need more prayer. <laughs> I ain't ready to deal with that one yet. No, let them go today. Because it's more about you 
than them. Don't let them stop you from receiving what God has for you. Don't hold anything against anybody. Let everybody go. All right, so we got to learn how to ask. We got to learn how to believe. We got to forgive people. Here's another one before we get ready to close. Don't be jealous or hate on others. This is a, man, this right here is a big one. People get to looking at how God is doing something for somebody else, but then they compare themselves. You're not to do that. God's got more than enough to bless you and them. He's got, listen, we're not going to be able to bankrupt God, so don't be jealous and don't hate on anyone. James 4, 2. I mean, I want God to bless all of y'all. I'm not comparing it. Hey, God gives you the desires of your heart. You got new stuff, houses, cars. I'm happy for you. I, I mean, because I know that it's not like he took what he had for me and gave it to you. He ain't going to do that. God's not going to take my stuff and give it to you. So if you're getting it, that's your stuff God had for you. So I'm happy for you. Amen. But people get themselves in trouble when they are jealous of what God is doing for someone else. Let's look at this last scripture, James 4, 2 in the Amplified. And then I'm going to close in prayer. I got one minute. Hmm. You are jealous and covet what others have and your desires go what? So what does that mean? If I'm jealous and I covet others, I'm not going to get my stuff. So you become murderers. And some of you say, I'm not a murderer. What do you mean? Okay, well, let's break down the scripture. To hate is to murder. As far as our hearts are concerned. Ooh, I never looked at it like that. To hate is to murder as far as our hearts are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and are not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment and the happiness that you seek. So you fight and war you do not have because you do not ask. And so don't hate on nobody. Oh, just applaud. They get praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I know God's got. And then all of a sudden. You'll find yourself rejoicing. You can rejoice because someone else has something good going on in their lives. Then guess what? You'll have people rejoicing with you when things start to go well for you. Amen. Come on. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Come on. And he's got one with my name on it, too. Amen. How about that? I'm excited because God's got a blessing with my name on it as well. And so I don't have to worry about or be jealous of what he's doing for you. Amen. And so these are things that we must put into play. Now, as we go into this week, it's OK to remember the desires. Maybe God starts to speak to you. Some of you are going to start to visualize again. Some of you are going to start to think big like you used to. Welcome that. Let God continue to direct you and build up your faith. And then now, how about we start having some trees of life come forth in this church? Anybody? Come on. How many want some trees of life? Like, you know what? Good things. My desires are coming to pass. And I'm excited about it. Amen. God's got it for you. Just keep trusting him. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for being with us today. Thank you for the power of your word. I pray for everyone that is here, Lord. Bless them and strengthen them. Encourage them to keep on trusting you, to keep on believing, to keep on speaking about what you are able to do. Lord, you said that you take pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. Lord, you said that you would give us the desires of our hearts. I thank you that desires are coming forth. I thank you that trees of life are springing up in this ministry because you're a good God, a loving God. Every good thing comes from you. We thank you and we praise you. Maybe you're watching us today or maybe you're here today and you've never received Jesus as Lord. Well, that's the first step. See, the first step that you need to take in life is just surrender. Just give your heart to Jesus. Let him do with your life as he pleases. I guarantee you he'll make your life better than it was before.
but you have to receive them. Maybe you're here or watching at home and you've never asked Jesus to take over your life. You've never said this prayer. Just wave your hand at the TV or whatever you're watching or wave it in here and God will see you. He'll move in your life. Lord, we thank you right now that people are coming to know you and there, this thing is happening all around the world. Right now, you're bringing people into your kingdom. So church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message would know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, amen. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord, amen. Now let's stand to our feet, amen. Praise God. So as we get ready to go out of here today, we're gonna go out of here with some excitement, but also some uh, expectancy, amen? Because God's looking to move on the lives of his people. God's looking to bless you. He's looking to bless me because he wants us to be those good commercials for him. Amen? All right, I want you to tell three people now. It's okay. We got room. We got plenty of room today. So tell three people, I have forgiven everybody, so I'm in the Blessings Club. Amen? Is that okay? Can you tell three people, I have forgiven everybody, so I'm in the Blessings Club. Amen? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Brother Eric, come on, close us out. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's lift our hands toward heaven this morning. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for, for blessing us to be here today, Lord God. Bless these, your people, Jesus. These that have come here to seek you diligently today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for this word, Lord God, that we would just walk in it, Lord God, that we would take it into our hearts, Lord God, and, 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 and just believe it, Lord Jesus. Bless us as we go to our individual homes and bring us back, Lord God. It's your appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen.